so they don't have to be afraid. Well, what was crazy was about the implants is I, I did get foot x-rays. And what came up was a blank spot. I don't remember what foot. But I had the conversation with the, the possible implants in my feet. I told the doctor that it was rumored what was going on. My ex was finding me and this was possible. So we x-rayed my feet. And I still have problems with neuromas and things. So he just took normal x-rays. Now, I had this conversation with nobody but this doctor. Nobody on this earth but this doctor. The very, actually, it might even be in the same day or next day, I got an email. And this is weird. And I still have the email from another victim that's telling me, oh, you have implants in your left foot and your right shoulder. Mm -hmm. And you have to get CAT scans to show them. It, you know, because the x-rays are showing blank spots in my feet. Now, isn't that not bizarre? Well, I do hear many people talking about um, implants in their feet. That's not uncommon for an implant to be put in your foot. I mean, they can and knock you out and do it. They can. Do you have any idea when you think they did that to you? Oh, absolutely. I had the foot surgery in uh, June of 04 to remove damaged nerves in both my feet. And since I returned to work, the day I returned to work under this director, Mike Weldon, I mean, in fact, I was always good. I was, in fact, one of their star workers at welfare. Star workers. Never a problem. Always ahead of the game. Looking for stuff to do. Helping everybody because, you know, my work was always done. From the day I returned to work from that foot surgery, I was getting harassed daily, and I've been living it ever since. From all directions. And you were once very financially independent. Very, very financially independent. I was making, at the, in Nevada, I made about $23, $23 an hour with a side job of another couple thousand dollars a month cash. I had my daughter. I owned the house. I was in three bedroom, two car park in the back. I had a nanny, a housekeeper, a 2003 Camry that was in perfect condition. Today, I had a house full of antiques, um, jewelry, all this stuff. Today, I have a few of the jewelry and a couple of the antique pieces. The clothes, a few boxes of clothes, and I'm on food stamps. Did you, have a, did you say, did you still have a car or no? Yes, I had a 2003 Camry. I no, I mean now. Do you start your car or no? No. Okay. Uh, I got rid of a car in Arizona. Um, sometimes they put tracking access. devices on the car, too. Well, I got rid of the car for two reasons. One, I was harassed out of my job. In Arizona, I, when I fled, I did get a job immediately for $40 an hour. And I handed my retirement to an attorney to work it all out. The attorney just basically stole it. His name is Brian Finander in Phoenix. That's still going on with the Arizona Board and the AG and the Department of Justice as well. I want that money back. Mm -hmm. uh, thousands of dollars. This attorney took $24,000 and did four hours with the work. Uh, I stayed in Nevada denied my unemployment twice under reasons why I am eligible for $369 a week. They have recently denied a tort because it doesn't appear to be a tort. I sent that off to the Department of Justice. I basically could no longer afford my car. And... I never recovered it, and uh, the, I had a, a human rights advocate and the, my therapist and some friends were going to help me recover the car, but everybody had decided, no, he's, he told everybody he found he threw the car. Well, that didn't make sense either, because the car was three hours away from where I was. The car was impounded when Nevada tried to extradite me. What they did is my ex got one harassing phone call from me, and I was even out of space. And they're running open warrants without even calling me, and the detectives had my phone number to call me. So for one harassing phone call, they're running two warrants that are preventing me from working. And then they tried to extradite me. They wanted me to sign a waiver in Arizona and Flagstaff saying that, you know, I would just extradite. I said, no. I'm not just going to hand myself to these people. They've denied me due process in the court. I'm not walking into another courtroom in Nevada unless the federal court is a state witness with the federal marshal. And, you know, when all the advocates got involved in my ex, who is completely stupid, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, why don't you just tell everybody what you're doing? We said drop the car. So that's when I started dropping all the electronics around me. And when I left Arizona, I didn't have the car, but I had the cell phone, and I kept the battery out of the cell phone. I still have the cell phone. Mm -hmm. And one of the weird things about the cell phone is it's a hot phone where you buy your minutes, and it'll call anywhere in the state. 
It will call all numbers except one, CIA Internal Affairs. That's interesting. So, do you see your stalkers in the street ever? Do they ever approach you by day? Do you feel safe nope. when you go to sleep at night? Yes. I do now because local police, um, these people have sent investigators after me, even in New York when I was there in New Jersey. They sent investigators. I had police actually surveilling me, mm -hmm. even here in L.A. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is, and, and another reason how I found out Mike Wilden was involved, is the police end up liking me. And riding on them. <laughs> I, you know, that's, a good thing. Thing. that's a good thing because that doesn't happen very often. No, I, I mean, I'm a person that got along with everybody. You know, and I always took care of my own. I, I was, you know, not wealthy, but very well off. You know, my ex, he says he does this. His quote is, she hurt me for 20 years, so now it's her turn to hurt. And as I said, a lot of this I've had help through, and, and that's why... I, you know, I, I tend to blame just the criminal faction in Nevada because I have two ex-boyfriends that have helped me through this, and they've been very good. Well, they've I been have very a, good to me. I have a question for you. I know when you sent me your story, you talked about something about the computer hacking and harassing women for sex, like a sex ring. Oh, yes. Uh, at the beginning of my divorce, Judge Weller was my judge, the judge that was shot, and he actually came over the Internet. I was also on the sex site. I was on some personal sites. My friends had talked me into it. Mm -hmm. And over the sex site, because I was on Mash.com, Yahoo, and the other one was AdultFriendFinder.com, mm -hmm. Chuck Weller actually hit on me over the site in exchange for court favors. He wanted to have sex in portion. Now, the problem with this is, is he knows Shannon Blank. And they're friends. And the, the man, what they do is they cable modem hacks. So all they need is the email. And, they, and the people I was chatting with, men on the site that I'd never met, one of them turned out to be the mayor of South Lake Tahoe. Well, I'd never met this man, didn't know who he was, but Shannon Bryant did, and it hit the court papers. And that's how we found the computer hacking. And we found out that one of the reasons they do is one of the guys that does this, his name is Perry, I don't know his last name, but I do know that he owns a computer networking business of his own in the U.S. Bank building in downtown Reno. He's a friend of Chuck Weller's, and basically he had contacted me and Chuck Weller contacted me. They wanted me to have foursomes with him in exchange for court favors. So that's probably part of the reason. Women. Charla Mack was actually sleeping with the judge, Chuck Weller, before she was murdered. And I turned in evidence that it was more likely Chuck Weller and his friends that had this woman murdered. I turned that evidence into Senator Washington, who was my senator in Sparks. I'd worked with his wife for nine years, so I basically gave all my print over to this man trusting him. It was suppressed. I've never seen it since. In fact, I just proved collusion between Shannon Bryan and Sparks Police. He's, I said the only motive I can think of, because Shannon Bryan is building his law firm, if he's using this computer hacking, he's offering his computer hacking to police. Because for the sex crime, the sex ring. Well, they're using it for women. They're stalking the women. Mm -hmm. and the courts and the police are stalking the women, offering them sex, you know, in exchange for favors. And the police were actually, had one of them, Detective Reed and Meister, in on this in Reno. They had told me that they were going to, when I reported that these people were contacting me, and wanted, you know, the, the whatever, $50,000 of me to get their access and all that stuff against them. When I reported that, they had said, oh, we're going to watch your computers. I said, well, don't you need, like, my authorization and stuff to do that? Without another word or contact, my computers, and I have the pictures of it, would not shut down because other users were monitoring my computers. Mm -hmm. So basically what I believe is the motive is for Shannon Bryant is he's offering people these court favors you know, basically in return for court decisions rather than money and payoffs, because he doesn't really have a lot of money, he's offering this stocking to these judges that are hitting on women. <laughs> and Francis Doherty, I mean, the personal relationship there at my divorce trial was so obvious. I said, when I walked out of divorce, when she, I mean, she told me that basically all that, she, she looked at me and she said, this was her reason for completely taking everything I own and my daughter. She looked at me and said, Michelle, you're a very smart woman, and I hope you figure it out one day. 
but you have alienated your entire support system, and that is the reason you have just lost everything.